For a long time, even before there were really true BCL2 inhibitors or MCL1 inhibitors, BCL excellent inhibitors, it, it's been a goal of mine to be able to figure out where we can use these things. And it's a little bit of a challenge because um, there aren't a lot of genetic uh, alterations that can direct the use of these. And we've relied instead mainly on what I would call a functional approach. And since these BCL2 and MCL1 inhibitors operate at the mitochondria, we've actually been using functional approaches at studying uh, cancer cell mitochondria in order to predict who's going to be, whose tumors will respond to these drugs and whose tumors won't. It's a process uh, that we call BH3 profiling. I think we could break that into two questions, two, two parts. One is single agent, uh, uh, single agent uh, sensitivity of tumors. And I, I think that there are some tumor classes that would be pretty homogeneously sensitive and some that are more heterogeneous. So for, for example, we found that chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, is we pre, by, based on our assays looked like it should be homogeneously sensitive to BCL2 inhibition. And in fact, clinical trials have very much borne that out where there are essentially 80% response rates to single agent venetoclax, one of the small molecule BCL2 inhibitors in uh, clinical trials run by Andrew Roberts. Um, there's other diseases like acute myelogenous leukemia or multiple myeloma where there certainly are important subsets that are BCL2 dependent, but it's heterogeneous because some of the tumor is sensitive, some of the, some, some of the um, subsets of the tumors are sensitive, but other subsets are not sensitive to single agent BCL2 inhibition. But I think it's even a little more optimistic than that uh, because we've also found that you can perturb cells that aren't particularly BCL2 dependent and make them more BCL2 dependent. So in the case of CLL, it really appears that perturbing CLL cells with abrutinib, abrutinib is not only effective as a single agent, but what we found, and Varsha Gandhi's lab also found, is that perturbing CLL cells with abrutinib makes them, in turn, more BCL2 dependent. And it will be very exciting in the coming years to see how the combinations of, of uh, brutin tyrosine kinase inhibitors and BCL2 inhibitors operate on CLL. And those, that testing is underway, currently led by John Bird.